folks. Welcome back to the Horde. It's about 11.30 on the 27th, which makes it Tuesday. It's about 35 degrees. So I just came out to check on the, uh, the new shed, and I figured I'd uh, take you guys along for the walk. We'll can see it's snowing. Well, actually, now you can see it's snowing. And I didn't quite get everything put away like I would have liked to before this snow but this snow I think is just just a teaser this is not real snow yet so here we are checking on the shed you can see I still have to trim the uh, skirts off off the uh, top of it there um, I think you could see in the daylight a little bit better right as we step in yeah I just put the stuff in here to keep it dry, the 200S, the 300 TRX, and here we are. So, just so you could see a little more of the detail, I used a 2x12. So, basically, I have uh, 11 and a half inches to actually minus 3.5, so I have 8 inches of drop on 4 feet. So it's got more or less a flat roof. Um, I used uh, to put the roof down. I got rid of the wrapper, unfortunately. But it's kind of a self-stick stuff. What you do is you put it, you, you lie, you, you put it in place, and then you uh, you fold it back and peel a sticky back off of it. It's sticky back for the entire length, and then on top it's got a four inch strip that's also sticky so uh, anyway here's the shed it's not snowing inside the only snow is what I just tramped in with my feet there's my uh, my metal hoard over there uh, breathing antler Mike would be proud of me so there's that one discussion I figured I would have today whilst I'm floating around not getting too much done is a generator discussion uh, and with that, I'll just give you a quick generator of the hordes video. Uh, this generator, I'm not sure the brand name on it. It's got a Briggs & Stratton overhead valve. This guy here, from I, I got it cheap at a flea market. I guess it's a Coleman 5000. And it looks like it does 6200. Anyway, this is your basic... I don't know, five, six hundred dollar generator. Picked it up at the flea market. It was a hundred, I think I paid a hundred and ten for it. In the back corner, way out there, there's another one. I think it's got an old Kohler on it. Rope start. That was a ten dollar item. I picked it up basically for metal scrap value. So there's that. And then if we go down to the lower garage I can show you just quickly the other two generators I made some uh, videos a while back about the cart the carts I put together for them the dollies whatever you can see there's a little bit of snow sticking here and sticking in my eyes so here let me open up the other garage door I want to show you, I basically have two runners. Boy, as I'm walking around making this video, I'm uh, realizing that there's a Honda generator sitting right there. I don't know if you can see it. I did fire that one up. It does not, it runs, but it doesn't produce electricity. So there's a Honda generator. And then the two over here, hopefully I'm not getting too much snow on the camera. Then I got these two. Obviously, one's a Generac 4000. It's capable of 5000. And I got this this Chinese guy. It's uh, made by uh, Long Life or Lifelong or something like that. Um, so there's the generators of the horde. Why am I taking a few moments to describe these to you? Oh wait a minute. There's one more. God, I really should uh, go for therapy here. And the last generator of the horde 
is this one. It's a Troy built. It's like the one up above. I don't think, I mean, look at the exhaust on it. I don't think it has but a few hours. You could see the Troy built down there too. Um, it's a 2009, 10, 8, 8, 9, 10 vintage. I don't think it's got a few hours on it, but it's dead. Um, it threw a rod. That's why I bought the upper generator. I don't know what I paid for that one, 75, 85, and the upper one. Between the two of them, I have about $200 invested, and I'm hoping to put the two of them together and get one generator. Why all these generators? In my opinion, and it's only my opinion, I mean, you could debate why we're getting more storms, whether global warming's a cyclic event or if it's uh, man-made, but it doesn't matter. We're getting a lot of storms these days. If you look at my power lines, they're all overhead, and in my area, they're almost all overhead just like this. I have, uh, what is that, 17K, 17.8K that comes in on that, that line right there, goes to the transformer, comes down to a pair of 120s that come into the house, which gives me my 220 when I need it, and a pair of 120s for everything else. But given that high voltage line coming in, all a tree has to do is brush against it, and it pops a uh, fuse on the end of my driveway and no power last time i lost power i'm in the hudson valley of new york i had to wait for a truck to come all the way up from tennessee for the guy to replace um or uh, flip the breaker that turned my entire branch back on that's why i own generators i also have friends who uh who occasionally need to borrow and and i'll i'll lend one out and if i have a couple of spares i'll lend two of them out if i have a friend that's without power but what would I do if I had no generator and I was f familiar with today's current situation? This is what I'd do. I'd go right to my friends at Harbor and I'd pick up this generator here. Right on sale, 180 bucks. You say, yeah, but it's not a Generac, it's not a Troy Belt. Well, see that Troy Belt over there? Very few hours on it, it's quite dead. Uh, through a rod. Uh, you could say, oh, the idiot ran it out of oil. First of all, it didn't have really enough hours that it should have burned off all the oil in the crankcase that quickly. Second of all, when I checked it, it was fresh, it was clean, and it was full. So I think it has a thrown rod. It's either a thrown rod or a, uh, uh, a valve. Is, it dropped a valve, one or the other. Um, because it has absolutely no compression. I really haven't broken into it that far. But once again, what's it matter to you? If you're without power, it's the dead of winter. It's doing this outside. And your generator's dead. You're kind of uh, in a bad situation. So, given that I have two right there ready to run, which one do I normally use? I normally use the yellow one, the, uh, the, cheap, the cheap one. It's from China. <laughs> The reason why I have two generators, the Generac I bought for the year 2000, and never needed it, never needed to even start it. So uh, it's got like, it had like almost no use on it. So I bought it in 99, and I didn't finally fire it up again until 2010, when I was building that garage. No? Yeah, I think I'd fired it up to build that garage. We were without power for a few days. And I was using the yellow one to power the house. And then the red one to power the garage. Why was I using two? I wanted enough power in the house to run an air conditioner and run a microwave and a few other things without having to multiplex the saw. So I, I just separated and had a generator for each. Okay, but once again, if I were, if the power went out two seconds from now, which one would I fire up? I'd fire up the yellow one. The yellow one is about, God, how old is that thing? It's probably about six, seven years old. You turn the key, it fires right up. Um, let me show you that so you can see it. There you go. It fires right up. It's good for about 3,000 watts on a full tank of gas. It'll go 12, 13 hours. It uses less than a half a gallon an hour, quite a bit less, like probably about a third, a third of a gallon an hour. It goes about three, three hours on a gallon. It depends how it's loaded, obviously. Uh, it's quiet. It's uh, reliable. I probably have about 150 
to 250 hours on it. I'm not sure. I've lent it out a few times, and I'm not sure how much my buddies have run it. I know I've probably put about 150 hours on it. Why do I like it better than the Generac? It's quieter. It uses less gas. It's electric start. Um, and if it were to blow up tomorrow, it doesn't owe me anything. Where the Generac still owes me something, I guess. Um, the Generac, though, starts easy. First pull, good generator. Everything's good. And once again, why would I buy this? I would buy this generator, especially, uh, I'm partly what's driving this discussion is my uh, sister-in-law lives on Long Island and she's been without power. She was without power for two weeks after Hurricane Sandy and she, uh, she doesn't believe in global warming and she doesn't believe in owning a generator even though she has a garage and she could easily put it in there. My belief is you spend the 300 bucks for that generator. Um, if you don't trust it lasting very long, they give you 90 days, I think, and then you could buy, um, then you could buy a two year for another 20 bucks. So by the time you buy a generator and a couple of extension cords, you'll have $400 out. And basically for $10 a month, you're taking out an insurance policy. I'm throwing on the uh, price of the uh, extended warranty if you're so inclined to buy such things. Um, and should the power go out, you roll it out of the garage, drag it out of the garage, however you get it out of wherever you're storing it, I recommend the garage, keep it clean, keep it dry. Um, you pull the string, you fire it up, and you uh, keep your refrigerator plugged in, plug in your refrigerator, you know, an hour or two hours in the morning, two hours at lunchtime, two hours before you go to bed, and you don't waste a load of food. Um, in between, you microwave up a burrito, uh, boil some water for a cup of coffee, um, something like that. A small amount of money, you have a generator, and you take care of yourself. Uh, problems, though, because we've been without power here for a long period of time, um, and it does happen. Gas stations need electricity to run their pumps, so my suggestion is you try to keep yourself five gallons of gas around, um, six, seven gallons of gas around, so you could, uh, you, you could fire the thing up when you need it. Um, what I do is I, I typically try to keep a clean, uh, not smelly container for gasoline in the car. So if I hear there's a situation, I just fill it up on my way home and bring it home. I normally try to keep 5 to 10 gallons of gas floating around. I use stabilizer. I don't know if you can see any of it here. No, it's not handy. I normally use stabilizer to keep it up to par. Um, gasoline keeps maybe for, I don't know, three to six months. Stabilizer, you might get a year out of it. Keep it out of the sun. Keep it cut tightly capped. Um, you, you know, after a year, it's getting a little shaky. I always run my generators out of gas, so to speak. I turn off the gas and uh, let them run until the carburetor's empty. You know, I would I choke them a couple of times to make sure all the gas is out of them. That's important. And uh, one final thing: um, never turn off your generator with a load on it, and don't let it run out of gas with a load on it. It's not good for the uh, magnetism in the alternator to run them out like that. Once again, if I had no generator tomorrow, I'd buy something like that. You don't have to buy it from Harbor. You can, Tractor Supply also has them, and I'm sure you guys can find them elsewhere. Occasionally Garmin has them. Go for three to 4,000 watts, just something to run the refrigerator, a light, if you got a wood stove with a fan on it or a pellet stove, so you can run that kind of stuff. Get yourself a couple of extension cords. I don't recommend leaving your extension cords out in the snow as I am. I'm going to bring those in right now. Um, and that way you have something and you don't have to sit in the dark and the cold. You can keep your refrigerator cold. You can toast up a burrito or uh, microwave up a burrito, have a little tea, run a light, and y you know basically keep yourself in decent shape. Um, once again, I like the uh, I like my 
Long Life or whoever made uh, my my Chinese version there. I like that generator because it uh, it's very very quiet. It's very very efficient on um, fuel. If I really need to fire something heavy, power tools, all that kind of heavy stuff, running multiple power tools or running a compressor, typically I run the Generac for that. All right, folks. Hope you find these useful. Take care of yourselves. Live, love, have a great time, and we'll catch you on the next version of the Horde.